back-to-school savings are officially in session at Tanger Outlets. Shop tax-free August 2nd through 6th and save up to 70% off the latest school styles. The best of apparel, footwear, accessories, and more. Save at Nike Factory Store, American Eagle, Gap Outlet, Crocs, Under Armour, Banana Republic Factory, and hundreds more. There's always something happening. Discover the latest fun and events all season long. Tanger Outlets, your savings destination. You're listening to the Archaeology Podcast Network. You have my sword. And you have my bow. And And my my trowel. trowel. Hi, you're listening to episode 11 of And My Trowel, where we look at the fantastic side of archaeology and the archaeological side of fantasy. I'm Tilly. And I'm Ash. And today is going to be a little bit different. We don't necessarily have a quest. We just thought, you know, it's the end of January, first month of the new year has gone by, and we just have a little bit of a chat about things and tell you all what's happening in the new year. So first of all, how was how was your new year and everything, Ash? Was it nice? Yeah, it was actually. It was tiring. Mm, all, I is. think it is. It, it really is. is. <laughs> <laughs> but it was good. <laughs> you always feel like, yeah, and in the new year I'm going to be refreshed and have get so much stuff done. And then it's like, oh, no, no, no. No, I need another <laughs> two weeks off. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. How about yeah. you? Was it good for you? It was good. It was good. It was, you know, the classic. Everyone got sick and, and, uh, but yeah, it was fun. I went and visited my parents and that's always nice. And yeah, so no, it was good. And yeah, I managed to read a bit, <laughs> which is always Aww. nice for me because at the moment I'm really struggling to get into reading and things like that. But no, I'm trying to remember if I read any fantasy actually. What did I read? Yes, I did. I did read fantasy. I read Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. <gasps> I want to read that so badly. It's on my TBR. It's a good one. I really enjoyed it. I think it's really, it was a really interesting one because I didn't really know what to expect with it. But it's, and this isn't spoilers, but it's, it was really interesting to read because they depict academic life so well, even though it's from like a fantasy perspective. Like if you took away the fact that it was fantasy, it could be someone like going on an academic field trip, which I thought was really clever. That sounds very clever. And I've heard good things, good things about it. So yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. no, it was a good, it was a fun one. And what about you? Did you manage to get some reading done? I did. Nothing majorly like in fantasy. Now I'm reading What the River Knows. (gasps) Um, So I'm very excited. And that's got fantasy elements in it Mm -hmm. with some magic and Mm -hmm. And it's basically a mummy, essentially, <laughs> or close to it anyway. So I'm excited to finish that. But I read a few, I read two books, I think, <laughs> over the Christmas nice. period. So that wasn't too bad. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty yeah. good. It's pretty good. But uh, yeah, nice. Yeah, I actually got The Wheel of Time, book one, because ah. I've never read that. And, oh, you're yeah. in for a I know. long well, haul. <laughs> I was also, I was like, mum and I had literally had a conversation the day before about how I was, you know, a bit sad that I couldn't read as much anymore because I never had the time and I always procrastinated and all this kind of thing. And then I opened up a Christmas present to me and I'm like, mum, really? Like, I, just, <laughs> I just told you that I can't read much anymore and you've given me the like most epic <laughs> thing. Yeah. Like an 11 book series. <laughs> Each book so is like 500 life. pages. Yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Well, there you go. <laughs> so we'll see if I ever get around to reading it, which I mean, I'm sure that has so much stuff that we could dive into from an archaeological perspective. So, uh, Oh, yeah. Whole law, like everything. Yeah. So have you, systems like, yeah. Have you read them or you know of them? Or? I know of them. I've got yeah. friends that read them and I've really wanted to dive into it. But I, again, I'm like, right. do I have the time? I mean, just to look at this book, which <laughs> uh, however many, maybe even five, ten years ago, I would have looked at this book and been like, hells yes. Like, this is my yeah. book. I'm going to dive into this. It's thick. It's hefty, you know. But then, yeah, now, now I'm just like, oh, gosh. <laughs> I know, and I've seen like the Amazon Prime like TV show, but right? apparently it deviates so much uh, from the books. Uh, so I don't know, I don't know, but I will pick it up one day. Yeah, <laughs> one day. One day. <laughs> Maybe we'll read it on here. You never know. That's right. That's very true. Well, which leads <laughs> so good at segues, Ash, uh, because that segues beautifully <laughs> into something that we wanted to talk about. So. For the next year, we are, of course, still going to be doing more quests. Sometimes we're going to have some guests joining us on these quests, depending on the topic. By the way, as always, if anyone's listening and has some topics that they would like us to cover or some suggestions, I mean, you know, we're we're very happy to to hear any 
any suggestions that you might have for us. Always happy to take on feedback as well. If you can, you know, let us know what you think of the podcast. You can check on our Instagram, uh, for example. Uh, I think actually you can also now comment directly on like the podcast streaming services where you are and we should get some kind of notification. I'm not sure how that works though. But anyway, one thing that we are also hoping to introduce this year is live recordings, which how do you feel about that, Ash? Scared. <laughs> <laughs> so I did with scared. <laughs> It'll be fun. It'll be fun. So I'll just talk a little bit about it because I'm the one who's trying to organize these live events, basically, with the Archaeology Podcast Network. We're trying to organize more regular live podcast recordings with all of our shows. And yeah, so of course, we are part of the Archaeology Podcast Network. But we thought rather than just do like one of our standard shows, it would be fun to do something a little bit different, you know, especially for the live show, something that maybe requires a little less scripting, I suppose you could say, which, so that's what we're trialing today. And as you can see, it's going beautifully. <laughs> we're not rambling beautiful. on at all. <laughs> I mean, actually we're doing pretty well. So we thought we'd do a read along. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> so not a wheel of time. <laughs> no, no. I think we'd be here forever if we did that. I mean, that would be a whole podcast series in itself, right? Just yeah, it reading. would be. There probably is one out there. I was just thinking that. Yeah. Yeah. Cause there's, there's a couple of cool other ones that I have followed. There's a well, there's a Discworld podcast. I now can't remember the name of it, uh, where they read, they sort of cover a book every every episode. As you know, I'm very obsessed with it. See, even, even in this episode. <laughs> <laughs> every time. Any <laughs> time I talk to you, Tilly, it's Discworld. <laughs> Discworld. <laughs> Sorry. Have you heard about the word of Discworld? <laughs> <laughs> yes. So the, the, they do one. And I know that, for example, there's a read along of the Lord of the Rings books that is done through Instagram. I can't remember now as well the name of the uh, person if i find these i will put them in the show notes so that you can have a look and see them one podcast that i quite enjoy is called pod and prejudice where they yes. read, read the jane austen books they're good fun and so that was sort of what inspired me a little bit as well to suggest the idea and ash was on board straight away because we realized it. we both have so much time to read <laughs> <laughs> yes we're not busy at all no 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 not at all not at all although out of curiosity what is your average like read rate oh, would you say I did, i've never kind of measured it i've just started to even like engage with goodreads again so oh, okay <laughs> we'll see how it goes but i mean it depends i go through stages of i'm very much a mood reader so mm. like i will get really engrossed in something and then i'll keep reading and then oh, I'll, I'll be like okay well i've got this I really want this very specific book yeah. <laughs> and uh, I will try and find it and then I'll read it and then I'll continue on that. But I don't know. What about you? I have realized that I can just about handle the one book a month, <laughs> for book club, <laughs> which we'll get to later. So, you know, and then I have though made a new year's resolution with myself to try and read more books. Cause I think my problem is like in the evening and stuff, if I do have a bit of time, I just sort of collapse on the sofa and either scroll on my phone or watch something or, you know, maybe try and read, but then fall asleep or something, or, you know, the baby cries or something like that. So I'm determined to try and just during the day as well, just, you know, when I have five minutes and I'm making a cup of tea rather than scrolling on my phone, I'm going to read instead. That is a big goal. Right? We'll see. Yeah. We'll see how it goes. But it also doesn't allow distraction. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, which I have a lot of in my, in my yeah, household. Yeah, so. I was going to say. I mean, not like you're all distracted or anything, Tilly, but like you have a lot going on in your life. Like, <laughs> yeah. so, uh. oh. Well, but I thought as well, I was thinking about this and this is maybe a little deep for it, but like I think... It's, so much nowadays where, you know, looking at a phone and I work a lot from my phone. So a lot of the time where I'm on my phone, I'm actually doing work. I'm not just scrolling. But then you think, oh, my, you know, I have two young kids and they're seeing you, even though we try not to be on our phones all the time, you know, but still they'll see you doing stuff on your phone a lot more. And I'm like, I, I love reading and I, I do read just they don't then see that as much because I usually do it when they're asleep or, you know, when mm. they're in bed or something. So I was like, I should read more. And we read with them and they love reading. But like, yeah, so that was also a little bit, I guess, the a bit of the inspiration behind it. I thought maybe even if I'm not, even if I have to reread the, the page again <laughs> that evening, but at least I'm showing like, look, this is something fun that we do <laughs> when we have a pause in our day. So do you, do you prefer books, like actual physical copies, or mm. do you have a prefer Kindle reading or like ebook readers? I think it depends. So I, I do really love the physical books. 
and you can have nice bookmarks and everything. But then I have a Kindle, which I bought because I was traveling around a lot when I was at uni. And it is so useful to just be able to have, I now have that in my handbag. So if I'm out somewhere and then I have, you know, a doctor's appointment, I'm in the waiting room or something, I'll read Mm -hmm. on the Kindle rather than reading on the phone then, you know, Uh, because I don't like reading on my phone and I don't like reading on the screens. But the Kindle's sort of okay. I do really like audiobooks, though. I listen a lot to audiobooks as well, which is quite useful because you can just have them on in the background while you're doing stuff. But uh, what about you? Um, yeah, I'm a bit of mixed media as well. I like, I like, I'd probably say I read more physical books, mm. but I do love my e-reader mm. <laughs> so much. And uh, yeah. I, plus it's like it hides all manner of sins doesn't it <laughs> exactly well, I was about to say the kind of books that you read I, I imagine. like all different types of books <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> also, just for example, this Wheel of Time book is so massive. Yeah. That actually, just having a little Kindle version of it, you know, rather than this huge tome <laughs> that you have to cart around with you everywhere, is probably more useful. So, also for a lot of fantasy books, I think. I think that's, it's, it's that's quite like conspicuous consumption, isn't it? <laughs> Archaeology. Um, like, <laughs> you know, like having a big book in mm-hmm. your purse, just like pulling out of your bag and being like, mm-hmm. look at me, <laughs> I am reading this. It's a statement. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Even though you've got like hidden, like a little magazine inside or something. Yeah. <laughs> like, mm, the actually. classic, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's my smut book in the inside, <laughs> inside page. Yeah, well, yeah, totally. <laughs> That's why you get the Kindles, Tilly. <laughs> <laughs> I did. What book was it? Some horrendous smart book. I think it might have even been Fifty Shades of Grey or something. And, you know, there was so much hype Class. about it. And I was like, <laughs> I have to read this. Okay. Well, it wasn't even I have to read this. It was more, what is the big deal about this book that everyone's going on about? So I downloaded the sample on my Kindle. Up until the end of the sample, nothing really happens. But I was like, oh, it's basically like a Twilight fanfic, you know, thing. Eh, I could do with a fun, silly read right now. Sure, I'll download it. <laughs> and I was on the train and I was reading it and I got to like the first scene where stuff starts happening. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> And it was that whole thing of like, thank goodness I'm reading this on my Kindle. And no one's looking over my shoulder, but I was there like, oh my God. This is the the problem actually that happened with Fifty Shades of Grey in the romance genre, right? Is that Fifty Shades of Grey got so popular. I don't know why, but it did. um, And it, it ruined the discreet cover. So if yes. any romance, like erotica sort of book like that, they have a discreet cover on them. And that's mm. the whole point is that you can wave your smutty flag high. <laughs> no bus, one knows. Nobody knows, <laughs> but not everybody knows. And so now you've got these kind of cartoon covers and stuff. So it's changed the way that the romance has been seen, actually, mm. like yeah. in society. It's quite interesting. But yeah, you wouldn't have to have a Kindle because they wouldn't know what you were reading. <laughs> <laughs> But that is kind of useful thing with the Kindle. But no, I do like no, Kindles. But I, I do also enjoy the the physical books. Do you annotate when you read? Oh no, I can't. No, 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 no I can't. I can't do it to a book like a physical <laughs> book. I can't do. Yeah. I would sometimes maybe highlight, but I'm not a big highlighter. I see a lot of people on Instagram like with their nice pastel highlighters yeah. highlighting everything, and like it's just a mirage of color at that point rather mm. than actual words on the page. But I, I can't bear it. Like I just can't. I remember a, a, an old teacher of mine, an old history teacher as well, told me that the best thing that she ever did every night. <laughs> Oh, God. Um, was that she'd have a glass of red wine and she'd sit with her pen and she'd read a historical novel and she'd like write notes in the margins and stuff. That sounds like torture to me. I was like, oh. I can't do that. <laughs> oh God, no, I can't do it. They're so precious. I can I can even, I can do like a folding of the page slightly on oh. the top. I know. You do the dog end? No, yeah, you, oh, I, not dog end, dog ear. Dog ear. Dog ear. Dog ear. <laughs> dog ear. <laughs> You've been thinking about something else today. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Is that, is that a, is a, oh, I didn't even know that was used for this. No, I'm joking. I was thinking of a cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> I just it was a Fifty Shades like joke. Oh really? Oh. <laughs> like I said, yeah. I only read the first twenty pages, and then was like, oh, yeah, my God, sure, Tilly, sure. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know. Tilly's like, it's mad. I've got it was like a bit much for me. <laughs> Tilly's got about a thousand copies of Fifty Shades. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> my favorite though story is there was a Graham Norton episode and there was they were they had Jamie Dornan on who you know plays yeah. what's his name in the in the films what's his name like you don't know Gray I assume but I can't hey. remember what his first name is and they asked you know how many women have read the book and like nearly all the women put their hands up and then he's like how many men and one guy at the back put his hand up and they were going oh you know did, did you enjoy them and he said no they're shite and, and then <laughs> Graham Norton was like ah but you notice he said they he read more than one let's just make sure they're really shy (laughs) yeah totally and also like he maybe he likes them and that's fine that is fine that's totally fine anyway we've got slightly off track we were talking about annotations and things as well but let's have a quick pause yeah (laughs) refresh ourselves have a have a sip of water calm ourselves down (laughs) And then we'll come when we come back, we'll be telling you what we are going to be reading in our exciting new read along. Shop Plato's Closet tax free August 2nd through 4th for back to school styles. We sell the trendy, gently used styles you need to make a difference in the world and in your wallet for back to school shopping. Save up to 70% off regular retail prices by choosing recycled styles. Save even more when you shop tax free this weekend. Make a change that others can respect and repeat. Shop Plato's Closet in North Charleston and West Ashley this year for your back to school looks. Plato's Closet, located in West Ashley on Sam Rittenberg Boulevard and North Charleston on Rivers Avenue. Back to school savings are officially in session at Tanger Outlets. Shop tax free August 2nd through 6th and save up to 70% off the latest school styles. The best of apparel, footwear, accessories, and more. Save at Nike Factory Store, American Eagle, Gap Outlet, Crocs, Under Armour, Banana Republic Factory, and hundreds more. There's always something happening. Discover the latest fun and events all season long. Tanger Outlets, your savings destination. Shop Plato's Closet tax-free August 2nd through 4th for back-to-school styles. We sell the trendy, gently used styles you need to make a difference in the world and in your wallet for back-to-school shopping. Save up to 70% off regular retail prices by choosing recycled styles. Save even more when you shop tax-free this weekend. Make a change that others can respect and repeat. Shop Plato's Closet in North Charleston and West Ashley this year for your back-to-school looks. Plato's Closet, located in West Ashley on Sam Rittenberg Boulevard and North Charleston on Rivers Avenue. Back to school savings are officially in session at Tanger Outlets. Shop tax free August 2nd through 6th and save up to 70% off the latest school styles. The best of apparel, footwear, accessories, and more. Save at Nike Factory Store, American Eagle, Gap Outlet, Crocs, Under Armour, Banana Republic Factory, and hundreds more. There's always something happening. Discover the latest fun and events all season long. Tanger Outlets, your savings destination. Welcome back to this slightly silly episode of And My Trail. So before the break, we were talking about, well, we were talking about Fifty Shades of Grey for some reason. But not sure how, sorry, not sure how that came into the topic. But what we were supposed to be talking about, the kind of books we read and how we read them and that kind of thing. And the reason we were talking about that is because we're going to start a read along on Discord live events. It's still to be finalized how regular these live events are going to be and how often we're going to be on as well, because it's going to be an archaeology podcast network series. So we might only be on every couple of months, but obviously we'll still do our normal episodes in the meantime but so ash maybe you want to reveal to the lovely people listening what we are going to be reading oh yes well since the whole podcast is sort of been inspired by tolkien and um, we thought that it would be wise to mm-hmm. start with oh. the hobbit sam was well although he's not in the hobbit <laughs> <No>. <laughs> never mind <laughs> but, sorry i was trying to trying to be clever Just ended up it's very early in the morning for us it, this is why <laughs> <laughs> yeah the hobbit yeah, yeah hobbit which yeah. and i think we i think we spoke about this already in the first episode but that was already 11 episodes ago so maybe we can refresh ourselves you have you have read the hobbit correct yes yes yes, 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 yes. Mm-hmm. And, and you, you have have you? Yes. Oh, yes, 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 yes. But you read it first before you read Lord of the Rings. Yeah, I read it when I was younger. So when everyone else was reading Harry Potter, ah. I read The Hobbit. Ah, you're a cool kid. <laughs> um, I was not like the other girls. I <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah no no nice, yeah yeah because i did it the other way around for some reason i read the lord of the rings first when i was younger and then 
read The Hobbit when I was like 15, 16 or something, Mm -hmm. which is interesting reading it that way around because after reading Lord of the Rings, The Hobbit seems very, not simple, but like definitely aimed for a younger audience, which it was. Yes, it's a children's book, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that was quite Uh interesting. Yeah, but then the read-along that we're going to do is not just a read, we're not just going to read you know, we're not going to just sit and read it out loud. <laughs> that's, that's not what the read along will be. What we will do, we will read, and we have to work out how many, how many chapters are in it. Hang on, I have my copy here. Let's have a little look. We have, oh, there's actually quite a few chapters. And they're approximately 20 pages, 30 pages each. Oh, apart from A Short Rest, which is only 10 pages long. Interesting. But yeah, so, so based on our previous discussion of how much we can read in a month, we could probably manage like two chapters. And per live, if we have a live every couple of months, correct? Yeah, why not? Maybe we can see how we go. We'll have to see. We'll have to see how we go with it. See how much we get read in between. But uh, the idea is that Ash and I will read a certain chapter or chapters, and then we will discuss it in our live episode. But we will discuss it as archaeologists. Yes, well, because. We are archaeologists, as we have stated. (laughs) And the whole aim of this podcast is to sort of look at fantasy through the eyes of archaeology. So we will be reading this as if we are archaeologists out on a ethnographic field trip following this band of of, uh, dwarves and hobbit as they venture on their quest. Which, yeah, I'm excited about. Yeah, I am too, actually. I think it's going to be a new, it's similar but new direction. And it'll be a lot of fun. And it'll be that kind of content that's like, you can read along with us as well. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. That would be fun. And mm-hmm. also give in your, you know, if anyone has any insights or any any brainwaves about something, please do share them with us because that would be fun to... Yeah, maybe, you know, more minds. It's always a good, <laughs> makes a good brew. I don't know. Is that the, that's more not the phrase? <laughs> oh, more I thought you said more minds. <laughs> makes not... a good brew. I don't know. I've just more... made that up. Have I made that up? <laughs> I mean, it sounds it sounds like it could be a, a phrase. No, More, yeah. Anyway, if you know what the answer is to that as well, let us know. Yeah, there we go. That's our riddle for you. There we go. Yeah. First riddle. <laughs> what is what is that saying that Ash is trying to it. say? Do it in Smeagol's voice. Yeah, exactly. Smeagol. <laughs> I'm not going to try and do that Great now. Minds. I, I can't do it. <laughs> that was more like yoga on mushrooms or something. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Um, never mind. <laughs> I won't try and do a Schmeagle impression again. <laughs> oh, goodness me. <laughs> but yeah, so that will be what we will be chatting about um, yeah. in our live sessions. So yes, as I say, we're still deciding exactly when the lives are going to be. Even if the Archaeology Podcast Network lives doesn't sort of take off soon, we might just start one anyway, maybe. Because we also have a lovely Discord server for something that is, yeah, kind of quite similar and I guess the inspiration Mm -hmm. for for this podcast. Because speaking about, yeah, reading books as an archaeologist, I mean, is this something that you, first, before we get into that, is this something that you you still do before we started this podcast, Ash, or is it something that's already recently started? We've kind of talked about this before, and I think... For me, no, I never really read books as an archaeologist or and when I joined the Archaeo Book Club, which is the server that we're talking about, yes. um, <laughs> and we start we actually look at books through an archaeological perspective that have like hint that you know they touch the archaeological genre in a mm. way or have archaeologists in them or some processes. Then you start to look at it like an archaeologist. Actually, a lot of the times when I was reading, I'd actively avoid archaeology books. I mean, that's um, fair. That's yeah. also like when you, you know, go on archaeological tours or something. If you go on something that, a tour of something that you've researched, you inevitably are like, no, that's wrong. Mm. Yeah, well, that's that, a bit like, simplistic. <laughs> yeah, because so. inevitably it would be like harkering back to ancestors or like, oh, yeah. I don't know, it would be like the Neil Oliver light edition <laughs> of something. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, so like it would always. I'd always read it and get a little bit frustrated. And I'm not saying that even that the books that we read in the Archeo Book Club don't do that. No, in fact, there's definitely been a few. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely been a few. But 
but we have a community where we can like rage with each other. <laughs> and we're like, what is going on? What do you mean she's not using a trowel? She just feels the environment oh, and knows gosh. what archaeology is. I just got to that part in this month's book. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Join the Discord if you want to know what you want to do. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah there's like you know I, I actively avoided it for a really long time because it would actually make me internally cringe sometimes and I'd be like oh I can't do it I can't do it yeah, um, yeah. So what about you do, you do you do you beforehand read from an archaeological perspective from your training not, no again I don't think so really but I have realized that when I read I usually am just trying to lose myself so I don't really I'm not as critical, I guess, mm. when I read it where I didn't used to be. And actually, since joining the book club, that has made me a lot more aware of a lot of things that maybe before I would have just kind of been blind to or not really noticed or whatever. And now it's like, oh, interesting. Yeah, OK. You know, so I, I mm. noticed other issues as well that I didn't really pay attention to before, I guess, which... It's a good thing and a bad thing because it means that some books I'm just like, oh, like I probably would have enjoyed this, but now I'm very aware of this issue that, you know, keeps coming up. Yeah. And, uh, but then I think I still am able to kind of turn off that critique when I when I need to. But I never used to read it. I don't I wouldn't say I avoided archaeology books. In fact, actually, I used to I always used to try and find ones with archaeologists in because I was curious. But then I didn't necessarily critique the the archaeology within it as much i just sort of enjoyed the story whereas now yeah in the book club we're a lot more focused on how how the archaeology is represented within it so mm -hmm. uh yeah which and there's been quite a few where you know we've been pleasantly surprised actually at, at the depiction oh, of yeah. archaeology and and it's done correctly and you know or even there's like so a think, layer of it where you can look you can read something and as an archaeologist you're like oh this is their methodology yeah. Oh, and that kind of shows you that they've researched and they didn't yes. want to put so much archaeology in it that it kind of, you know, unbalanced the book. Yeah. But they, they can show you that they have worked and or um, experienced archaeology. Yeah, in some way. or even just mm -hmm. talked to an archaeologist. Which yeah. some, some of them you think, you don't know, you haven't even, you've seen Indiana Jones. <laughs> and this is yeah. your, you've maybe done one volunteer dig of like a very unprofessional <laughs> archaeological dig and this is what you think archaeology yeah. is. Yeah, and but, we've also met some like brilliant writers in themselves who yes. are archaeologists. Yeah. Like there's some of the best, actually one of the best books of this year, I'd say, that's coming out in April, is our good friend E.M. Weld's mm -hmm. Broken series. Oh, even if we're broken, yeah. Even, even if, if we're, we're broken, broken. Um, yeah, which absolutely. is about two archaeologists. Oh, it's so And good. the balance of archaeology in that is unreal. You're like, mm -hmm. oh my God, you can geek out so much. So yeah, yeah it's been a been fantastic. And I think the Archaeo Book Club has allowed me to look at stuff from a different perspective and an archaeological perspective too. So yeah, it like, so of the majority of the stuff, well, I wouldn't say the majority of the stuff we read in the book club is not fantasy because we have had a couple of fantasy ones, but we don't necessarily focus on fantasy. But of course, in this podcast, we want to focus on the use of fantasy as a genre, because as we spoke about in our very first episode, it's one of those which, you know, it's it's basically world building, which is kind of what archaeology <laughs> is. And one of the things I really like about reading fantasy books as an archaeologist and looking at that is that you can see it's not necessarily depicting the field of archaeology, but you can read it from an archaeologist's viewpoint, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Like, right? You can you can see the lore build up and you can see the the fact that, oh, they've mentioned this one little thing and that's because of this and this and that, you know, it, it, it's it's all linked. It's all very detailed. And I think that that's when a fantasy world is done really well is when you could go in as an archaeologist and excavate. Yeah. <laughs> uh, absolutely. Because, I mean, archaeology is the study of human activity, isn't it? So yeah. if you have humans or if you have orcs, if you have <laughs> dragonborn or whatever, you know, mm. you can still go into that world and be completely immersed. Then mm. you know that's a really alive, it's an alive world. Yeah. Um, one that an archaeologist can easily dig into. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. That was good. Hey. <laughs> yeah, so so uh, I'm looking forward to the to the read along, and that's sort of what we're mm -hmm. going to aim to do. Indeed, is we're going to sort of explore the world through the lens of archaeology. 
yeah where what better to start than tolkien's world you know exactly. like amazing <laughs> with the, and also with the hut i just opened to the first page and it is you know it's it's archaeology in a hole in the ground Right, like that's yeah, that's literally true. how the book starts. <laughs> so, although I like the way then. So the first hole, it, well, I know you will probably know it, but in a hole in the ground, they lived a hobbit, not a nasty, dirty, wet hole filled with the ends of worms and an oozy smell, nor yet yeah. a dry, bare, sandy hole with nothing in it to sit down on or to eat. It was a hobbit hole, and that means comfort, which you know. Oh, they, man. Yeah. Oh, I love it already. <laughs> Wish all the sights I dug. <laughs> right? <laughs> Imagine. Hobbit you dig it down, you're like, oh, a hobbit hole. Lovely. <laughs> uh, more like a hovel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but great. Well, so, yeah, this has been a slightly different kind of episode <laughs> to our yes. usual ones. I think I think we covered everything that we, that we needed to. Yeah, it was an update episode with yeah. a bit of fun in yeah. there. A yeah. bit of silliness yeah. for the new year. Yeah. We're also, by the way, going to try and make our Instagram at the moment, uh, as you can imagine here, both of us are very busy with lots of other <laughs> things. This is a, a thing that we do in our very limited spare time. But we are going to try and make our, our Instagram account a little bit more interactive so that we can, you know, share other things with you, get some feedback and, you know, yeah, make you a little bit more involved in the podcast as well. At the moment, we've just been sharing when new episodes are released, but so it might still take a little bit <laughs> for us to get going, but our aim at least is is to mm -hmm. do that. So hopefully we can, we can get a bit more traction on there as well and get a bit more yes. interaction with you, our lovely listeners. So that's about it for this episode of And My Trial. We hope that you enjoyed listening. As I mentioned, if you have any suggestions for future topics or any inspiration for ideas that you think that we could dig into. Oh, sorry, Ash, I completely stole your pun there. <laughs> so yeah, so do keep an eye on our social media, Instagram account, And My Trial quite simple so that you can uh, see what we're up to and we will also update you when we start to do these wonderful live shows all of our contact info as well as hopefully the references to the shows and things that we mentioned today can be found in the show notes and don't forget we are part of the archaeology podcast network which is a wonderful network of different archaeological shows involved in all kinds of topics within archaeology. So do go check that out and you can always become a member and then you'll get access to the recordings of these live shows after the event, as well as lots of other lovely membership benefits. So yes, we'll see you next month for another episode of Am I Trail. Bye. Bye. This episode was produced by Chris Webster from his RV traveling the United States, Tristan Boyle in Scotland, DigTech LLC, Cultural Media, and the Archaeology Podcast Network, and was edited by Rachel Roden. This has been a presentation of the Archaeology Podcast Network. Visit us on the web for show notes and other podcasts at www.archpodnet.com. Contact us at chris at archaeologypodcastnetwork.com.